This is the TGR Jane V2, a keyboard that redefined the term endgame back in 2018. It features a brass internal weight and this signature Toblerone mirror polished rear weight. 40 units were ever made and they now go on the aftermarket for anywhere between $2,400 and $7,000. But it's coming back with an updated design as a rolling release in partnership with Mono-K. And I've got one. All right, so when did you guys start this project and why are there so many design updates? For the ME version, it was very straightforward. We did the Tomo. Um, I was asking Sam, I said, hey, a lot of people like a TKL or 60. For the 60, you already have the unicorn that you're doing with the lane. And then I was like, oh, let's just make the same change. Just do a round two and then we will handle production. And then he was like, oh, I don't want to do the same thing again. And he was like, oh, look at the Tomo. What if we take some elements from Tomo and, and put it on the chain, thinking to see how it looks like. And so I said, oh, okay, you're the designer. You do what you want to do. All right, so this is how much I know about TGR. Um, I know it's owned by one guy. His name is Sam, and he goes by the online name Yuxi. I know that he's either Singaporean or Malaysian. In 2015, he posted his first IC for the interest check for TGR Jane. It will say the reason he wants to make this TGR Jane keyboard is because he wants another keyboard that sells in the market called the KMAC. It's called the KMAC 2, uh, made by KBD Mania, which was this kind of forum, kind of website, like Korean forum style website. I, th I believe like some of the prototypes initially had criticisms from people in the community. They were like, just, just looks the same. So he kind of like, you know, went over revisions of the design and kind of like made something that was um, pretty much reminiscent of all that. Top mounted plate, wedge kind of like looking side profile, like certain bezel proportions. Should I do it? I don't think anyone care, would they? Fuck it, let's do it. Wait, so is there anything design specific about the Jane that makes it so special compared to like any other TKL? I think it was one of the first keyboards that did a Toblerone weight as mm -hmm. well as split the act. Here, I actually have one. Jesus Christ, he has oh, one. It was one of the first boards to actually split out the weight design, right? But the inside of the Jane weight, mm -hmm. if you've seen, it's like milled in holes mm -hmm. to help cut back on like reverberation as well as make the board sound less hollow. So the internal weight, as well as with the external accent and the Toblerone, I think is one of the things that mm -hmm. attribute to why the board sounds and looks the way it does. Mm -hmm. that was That's dope. interesting because this this Jane, there's no there's no internal weight. Mm. One of the talking points that we had earlier was like, did TGR and Monarchy make a blunder by calling this a TGR Jane V2? The amount of updates maybe could have warranted a V2.5 or something like that. In terms of like the nomenclature for it, or it's like the Polaris, for example. There's the Polaris R2, which has made a lot of differences in terms of like internals and structures. It sounds completely different. Or like the Iron 165 R1 to R2. So I think it's fair for them to still call it the V2. As long as the overall characteristic of the board is still a Jane V2, I think it's it's fair to still be called the Jane V2. I mean, the ME stamp probably helps it a lot. The bottom of it is attached completely by magnets. So there's no more screws all the way around here. Ah. There's a lot of magnets in that bitch. They're super strong. Like the, the whole keyboard with the bottom sticks to a metal desk. Like. <laughs> God. So you're telling me I can fucking leave that shit on my fridge? You could. <laughs> you just fucking smack that shit to my fridge? <laughs> Wait, can we, can we have a... You better put a segment like that, Abby. Dude, yeah, I actually will. This keyboard was run as what's called a rolling in-stock release. Basically what this means is people facilitating the purchase buy all the stock ahead of time, then they sell it as a raffle or like a first come first serve until all the stock runs out. And then two months later, they repeat the process again, hence like the rolling release. I really wanted to get a little bit of insight into what this looks like from within the company. So like the logistics and the cost. I want to say April. I want to say, yeah, April 2021, we started thinking about it, we started making it. By the time we had a golden master, that was like September that we paid for it. So physically, this thing has like a really striking design, right? The Toblerone, which slots into the back of the board, has this amazing mirror finish. And the magnetic weight on the back has this striking blue with this cutout in the bottom. And on top of all of this, the keyboard needs to sound ultimately like a Jane V2. I can't imagine that it would be 
easy to make 200 plus of these units to such a high standard. So just pure QC and stuff, not packing, not writing down the serial numbers for authentication cards, not matching, not even thinking about processing orders. Just pure QC takes each person on average about 15 minutes. If a person needs to complete 30 keyboards in a day, seven hours right there. Assuming they take no breaks, assuming they are machines and they don't have to use the washroom and they don't have to eat and they don't have to talk and they don't have to think. That's an insane amount of hours, by the way. And an insane amount of concentration doing the same thing over and over again. For total, we had we had six people doing QC. 12 hour days, Monday to Friday. One of them was caught sneaking in on Saturday. We kind of say, hey, please don't, don't come on Saturday and stuff like that. Just to finish it up, there are a lot of people feel really strongly about this is a teacher, this is not a teacher and stuff like that. But they always forget there's a person behind it. So when they email in and they trash talk our CSRs and stuff like that, they're real people. They go back to their families, they're, they're with the kids. They're... But the whole point is, is less of the fact that there's a lot of work and it's more of like we want to make sure that you get a really good keyboard because at the end of the day you're gonna hopefully keep it and use it for a very very long time if you only buy once from us and you use that for the next you know 10 years of your life i think we've succeeded we've we've served you well